to make people happy, prosperous, and progressive in spiritual life. Of course, these things were possible before the beginning of Kali Yuga because they were followed by Brahmanas who performed such yogyas. In the present, however, the Brahma of our Purana enjoins in this age of Kali climax a forbidden offering of horse and sacrifice, offering of cow and sacrifice, accepting the order of sannyas, offering oblations of the flesh to the four quarters, and negating children of the wife and one's brother. In this age, such the yogas as the Asamedha Yogi and Gomeda Yogi are impossible to perform because there are neither sufficient riches nor qualified dramas. This verse says, Mama Teya Maharaja Maharaj Bharat engaged the son of Mamata, Rilu Muni, to take charge of performing this yoga. Now, however, such drama is impossible to find. Therefore, the Shastras recommend Yajna, Sankirtana, Praya, Yajna, and Sulya. Those who are intelligent to perform the Sankirtan Yajna, inaugurated by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Varna, Krishna Krishna, Sangha Pangasaka, Parshadam, Yajna, Sankirtana, Praya, Yajna, and Sulya. Sama, in this age of Kali people, endowed with sufficient intelligence, will worship the Lord who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtan Yajna. Yajna must be performed for otherwise people will be entangled in sinful activities and will suffer immensely. Therefore, the Krishna Conscious Movement has taken charge of introducing the chanting of Hare Krishna all over the world. This Hare Krishna Movement is also Yajna, but without the difficulties involved in securing paraphernalia and qualified Brahma. This congregation of chanting can be performed anywhere, everywhere. The people somehow or other assemble together and are used to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All the purposes of yajna will be fulfilled. The first purpose is that there will be sufficient rain, for without rain there cannot be any produce. All our necessities can be produced in the rainfall, and the earth is either no source of all necessities. In conclusion, therefore, in this age of Kali, people all over the world should refrain from the four principles of sinful life, illicit sex, media, detoxification, and gambling, and in a pure state of existence should perform the simple yoga of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Then the earth will certainly produce all the necessities of life, and people will be happy economically, politically, socially, religiously, and culturally. Everything will be in proper order. So this is a description of the uh, kingdom of Maharaj, who was the son of Dushmanta. So uh, there's a short description here in this verse of his Lakshana, or his qualities, his appearance. And he had the marks of the Lakshana on his left hand and the marks of the Lotus on his feet. So these marks indicate a great person. Now we see in the uh, scriptures, there's descriptions of Krishna's hands and Krishna's feet and the auspicious markings there. And in the uh, other scriptures also we see the marks of Krishna's feet or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's feet. So there are specific marks which are very auspicious. So he had all these marks and uh, of course because he was the son of Maharaj Dushmanta, then he became the king and he ruled over the uh, whole of the uh, uh, kingdom. Uh, so it's described he was installed properly as the king. And uh, then it describes how he enforced sacrifices in different places on the Ganga and the Jumuna River and distributed cows to the Brahmins. So we'll see that this, uh, the performance of horse sacrifices and distribution of uh, wealth to Brahmins is one of the activities that is very typical of these kings coming in the uh, dynasty of Manu. Uh, so uh, he followed that particular procedure. Uh, however, as Prabhupada has pointed out here in the birth war, uh, in Kali Yuga, such sacrifices are not very practical. And in fact, the uh, scriptures also say that in Kali Yuga, 
type of sacrifices and horses and cows is actually forbidden. So therefore, uh, that is why we don't see these sacrifices in Tel Aviv. Now, he also gives the reasons for that. One, of course, is it requires immense wealth to do one horse sacrifice. So Indra was famous for doing uh, 100 horse sacrifices. Uh, and anyone who came up with that standard would be his competitor. So anyone who tried to go over that, he tried to discourage. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that means that it was uh, it required, it required great wealth and great endeavor to carry out even one more sacrifice to do 78 more sacrifices on the uh, Jamuna and 55 on the Gaga and he had immense wealth. And not only wealth, uh, each of these sacrifices is a very complicated affair and it requires qualified Brahmanas who know the procedures for carrying out these sacrifices with all the uh, rules and regulations and the mantras. Uh, so, uh, of course, at his time there were plenty of qualified Brahmanas. Whereas in Kali Yuga, very few people are qualified. Uh, maybe they can do a marriage ceremony or something like that. But to do a complicated sacrifice, like of course sacrifice, etc. Nobody in Kali Yuga at the present time, no Brahma probably knows all those mantras and the procedures. No one's done one in, in, in recent times. So, uh, very, very difficult to do in Kali Yuga. Uh, so the qualified persons are not there to do it as well as the, the wealth, etc. required. Uh, and if the qualified Brahmanas and the proper procedures are not followed, then there's no result. So this is the particular nature of the sacrifices in karma yoga. There are particular procedures uh, which have to be followed and there's particular purity of items, uh, purity of place, purity of time, etc. And everything has to be done perfectly. And then the mantras have to be chanted properly with an understanding of the meaning and have to be done in the proper way. And if some mistake is made, they have to correct it somehow. So, uh, very, very complicated uh, process requiring a lot of skill, a lot of learning, and a lot of practice. Uh, and then, if it is done properly, one gets the good effect. And if it's not done properly, you don't get any effect. <laughs> so therefore, one can go to all this endeavor, and if some mistake is not corrected, no effect. So therefore, it requires great precision in doing the sacrifices to get the proper auspicious effect. Uh, so, uh, of course, in uh, Bharat's time, it was not difficult to do that because there were qualified people, Brahmins and others, to do the sacrifices. Uh, in Kali Yuga, uh, it is not so. The wealth is not there. The qualified uh, Brahmins are not there with the knowledge of the sacrifices. And so these are two reasons why uh, uh, these sacrifices are forbidden in uh, Kali Yuga. Mm -hmm. Of course, the other reason is that since uh, no one is qualified, if they do the sacrifice, then they unnecessarily kill the animals. And there's no result from the killing of the animal at all because they don't, the, the, they don't get any result from the sacrifice. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has explained in, in Chaitanya Kharitamrita that the qualified uh, Brahmanas perform the sacrifice and though it looks like there is the death of the animals, actually that they are reborn again with a better body. So uh, they have a good effect. The, the effect of the uh, sacrifice of the cow or the horse is beneficial for it. But if it's not done properly, you won't get that effect. So therefore, uh, that the uh, result of violence is uh, nothing. We don't get any good effect at all. So, uh, therefore the uh, sacrifices of uh, this sort are forbidden. That does not mean that all sacrifices are forbidden. So we still have other sacrifices which are less complicated, which can be done. 
So they'll probably have things like the some scars that have sacrifices. Where seven has a sacrifice, or nine has a sacrifice. So these sacrifices are not forbidden as part of karma yoga. But these more complicated ones like the horse sacrifices and cow sacrifice, they are forbidden. But nevertheless, the even the, the process of yagya itself is not emphasized in Kali Yuga. We know that in Treta Yuga, yagya was the main process. Uh, but in Kali Yuga, the main process is Nam Sankirtan. So uh, in the Bhagavatam, this is also called yagya. Uh, uh, they worship the Lord through the Sankirtan yagya. Uh, the intelligent people do. So uh, this takes the place of the complicated sacrifices and whatever effects one is supposed to get, good effects one is supposed to get from the uh, horse sacrifice, cow sacrifice, etc., is accomplished by this easy method of Nam Sankirtan. So the benefit of Nam Sankirtan is it doesn't require wealth. Whether you have money or no money, you can chant the name of the Lord. And you don't have to pay a fee to chant. There's no secret contract involved. So it's free. Uh, so no wealth at all is required for this. Uh, it does not require uh, some qualified prominence to be involved in the process at all. Any individual can chant the name of a human being. Okay? It has some effect. Provided you don't commit apparatus. So therefore, in terms of wealth and qualification, there's no problem. It is uh, very, very free. Uh, unlike the uh, sacrifices. Uh, so uh, the uh, Nam Sankirtan also has no uh, animals involved, no violence involved at all. There's no sacrifice of a cow or a horse or anything. So we don't have to worry about uh, if it is improperly performed, then we don't get the result. Uh, and uh, even if the uh, name is improperly chanted, even then it gives some effect. So we have Nama Bas. Nama Bas that is imperfect chanting, either accidental or done with impurities. Still it gives effect. So nothing is lost in the uh, Nam Sankirtan Yagya uh, and everything is gained. So uh, these of course are some of the reasons, but the real reason for chanting the name of the Lord is that the name is directly the Lord. And by chanting the name, this is the simplest, most direct method of approaching the Lord and worshiping Him. And by that, we can attain the Lord. So, of course, we can argue that Yagya also is a worship of the Lord. And this is the, the uh, process that followed in Shrita Yuga. Yes, it is. Yeah. But it also must involve names of the Lord. So within the mantras uh, of the Vedas, the name will have names of the Lord there also. But the problem is that you need qualification to chant those names in the mantras. So not everybody can do that in Kali Yuga. So though Yagi also is the form of worship of the Lord, it requires greater qualification and precision and pronunciation. So many things are there, so many rules are there. And in chanting the name of the Lord, we say uh, no rules. Is beyond rules. So you can uh, mispronounce it, uh, even then it has some effect. Uh, so it is said that even the name broken up into different words that make the name, even that has effect. Uh, part of the syllables are in one word, part of the syllables are in another word, still has effect. Uh, so uh, imperfectly chanted, still it has effect. If one is impure and one chants, it has effect. 
and you can chant loudly or softly or silently or whatever. Uh, and anyone can chant. Man can chant, woman can chant, child can chant. Uh, any person, any varna, and any person not in a varna can chant. So, a uh, very, very flexible system for the uh, theory of Kali Yuga, where nobody is qualified for anything. So at the end of this first part, Prabhupada summarizes. So therefore, in Kali Yuga, all we have to do uh, is chant the name of the Lord and follow the basic principles of a white sinful life. That is, no eating, no intoxication, no illicit sex life, no gambling. And that solves our problem. We can progress very nicely, spiritually, economically, socially, religiously, whatever. Uh, it provides a very good solution for everything. Uh, so this is the, the basis of uh, uh, progress on all levels of Kali Yuga, chanting the Holy Name. And the assistance is, of course, following these regular principles. So we can say that the regulated principles themselves are part of the uh, Varnashram system. Uh, so in that sense, it takes support of these rules and regulations why we need these rules and regulations if name is beyond rules. Certainly, even if one does not follow the regular principles of chance, certainly it has effect. But if one follows the rules and regulations, then the effect is more. So, so this is certainly effect in all cases. But if we want to get higher effects, then we have to uh, more uh, perfect effects, stronger effects that we have to avoid the sinful activities. However, even if we avoid the sinful activities and we chant, that also is not, in itself, may not give the final result. Huh? So we have to chant purely. <laughs> Sudanam, not Namabas. So even if one follows the regular principles, we chant Namabas, still we don't get the highest effect. So therefore, we have to come to the level of pure chanting. What this means is that we have to get proper knowledge by which we know what is pure and what is impure in terms of chanting. So though we can chant in any condition and with mixed desires and no desires or all desires or whatever, if we want to get the prema, then we have to chant pure. That gives a nice effect. So though the Holy Name is so flexible that everybody can chant, everybody can get it, say, if we want to get the highest effect, Prima, then we have to come to the level of pure chanting. Uh, so as I said, this requires proper knowledge, uh, philosophical knowledge, distinguishing the Lord from David does. Knowledge of purity versus desires for material enjoyment or liberation. So, uh, knowledge of the nature of the object of our chanting, Krishna, who is he? What is his form? What are his qualities? What are his activities? We need some information on that. So, along with the chanting, we do have here the scriptures. So we need the scriptures also. And how do we hear the scriptures? Through the devotees. So we have chanting the holy name, we have hearing the scriptures, we have associating with the devotees. So these are all very, very powerful processes. Then of course we have other processes like worshiping the deity. So, uh, of course these are all processes of bhakti. So therefore the primary emphasis is upon chanting the name of the Lord. The next emphasis is other processes of bhakti so that we can chant purely. And then we have these other things, following regulated principles and supporting ourselves with other rules that we can take from Varnash and may assist us as well. And in this way we can uh, advance and attain the highest level of all. So this is the simplest possible uh, 
uh, process, and therefore it's recommended for everyone. Then you just go lead and move it down. fundamental qualification for chanting the name and going uh, emancipating itself. But if, and knowledge is also required for us to get a better understanding. If somebody does not have good education or doesn't even know how to read the scriptures mm -hmm. or perhaps even understand the scriptures if somebody is going to say that because he just doesn't have that kind of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So how does that, I mean, does it, doesn't that become like a qualification for them to uh, take to this process? Well, I would say in the case of Ajumel, he had no interest in anything and he chanted the Holy Name accidentally and he got free from his sinful karmas. So like that effect for an ignorant person who has no capacity to absorb scripture at all, he chants the Holy Name. That. But if he is so ignorant that he can't understand the difference between a Supreme Lord and a living entity, whatever that is, it's quite, you know, it's on a very low level of intelligence almost like an animal <laughs> or a small child or something like that. So then the, the effect also is that he can't do it so far, but at least he can get free from karma. That much he can do. Narantara Shri Shri 